maintain our own spirituality. Because many of the time, when we before we get married, many of us might be spiritually high up here, there. Before that spiritual engine. But you discover that when you get married, before you know it, pregnancy comes, and you begin to feel weak, you know you are tired, you don't feel like studying the Bible, you don't feel like praying, you know, before you know your spiritual life is going that gradually. And now baby comes in, the time that you used to pray before, you are now away taking care of the baby. Baby is crying here and there. The time when he is sleeping, you quickly go jump to the kitchen to clean up and all that. If care is not taken, you will discover that you will just be working all time, 24-7, without having time to study the Bible, to pray. Before you know it, your spiritual life is going down gradually. Somebody that is spiritual change before, you begin to go down. And that here is the man who is also faced with all the challenges of taking care of baby, taking care of the home, and all them. We have to make sacrifice, like she said the other time. Sacrifice of our time. Even if it mean sleeping four hours, like they used to say, you should sleep at least eight hours. That's the normal thing. But what will tell you, if you want to make it spiritually, if you want to make it in this present day, you cannot go by that hours of sleep. You have to sacrifice. Sacrifice time. Maybe in the middle of the night when your husband is sleeping and the children are sleeping, to take time of your own spiritual life. Taking time of studying the Bible. Taking time to pray and to keep watch over your husband. And that's where you will see that the spiritual uh, flavor of the family will be up there. So God has given us that assignment as women. And may we not fail in Jesus' name. Yeah. It's the tradition. I will actually I thank God for my wife because my wife prays. Pray. Sometimes she, I will not be hearing that. Because we don't be here. I know that. Please, women, it is very, very important. And the Lord will help you. Now, please take notes. Also, build up your children spiritually. Because in the day of your spiritual weakness, they will be the ones that will give you strength. I have seen that over and over again. The children will come and say, No, Dad, no, 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 you can't be done. You preach this to us. So, I will you not be the one. So, please invest into your spiritual life. And then the last one I want to say if your husband has not experienced serious spirituality before now, and he decides to take the challenge of this meeting, please don't discourage him. So if you wake up tomorrow and you might say now, nah, because of that meeting you were, he said we should be doing something, you talk to please go there. If you finish reading the Bible and to explain, he does it pretty in the way they put it there. Please just listen. If it is time to pray, and don't let it and say it's God as you are going on, let us get money. Don't let go to the house. And your husband, instead of helping him to find it to flee, you quench it. So don't say, eh, is that all the explanation from that person? Ah, no way. Please, can we read it today? I want to explain it better. What have you done? Quench it. If you finish praying, and that is all the prayer you pray, don't say,
to say a word of prayer to our, I mean, for our spouses. I can do better. Please hold your spouse and say a word of prayer to, to God. Say, Lord, to ignite your fire in the life of my spouse. Do you pray in the name of Jesus Christ? Lord, ignite your fire again in the life of my wife. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your fire keep burning in his life, in our life, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your fire in our life shall not go down. In the name of Jesus. Lord, your fire will continue to burn in our family altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we will not be to rest in our spiritual journey with you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. I think I saw, I can see someone in hand. Someone is raising his hand over there. Okay, nobody. Alright. Okay. Um, Daddy, I remember when I was like, some women say you don't love, they tell their husbands you don't love me. And the man says, I love you, I'm giving you money. What else do you want? But you know, that's not all. What else can the men do? Because really and truly, some men think once they give you money, that's all. Every other thing should fall into place. Can you give us practical examples, like real life issues? How do we handle such? The Lord will help us. Amen. Three or four days ago, myself and my wife were coming from somewhere. And there was an issue we were discussing. I don't know what I said, and she was not comfortable with what I said. And she was trying to now express herself. And I want the men to listen to this one. When women are emotionally broken, they express their emotion with tears. And that disturbs men. Because a man will say, uh -uh, what type of nonsense cry is this one now? We have started this useless cry again. But I want to beg you, your wife's tears is not useless. So men expresses emotion by shouting. A woman expresses emotion by shedding tears. Sometimes tears for nothing. Hello? Do you hear me? But you see, when it comes, it is not a time to judge. She wants you to come and do what? Wipe the tears and embrace her. So for me, I felt, and I was driving. So I said, is it this thing we are talking about that you are crying about? That one that I said finished me. <laughs> Because she wondered, she started wondering, oh, so, I thank God. <laughs> and for me, I was thinking, what have I done now? <laughs> so when I, so what she was trying to explain, she was no longer talking. And I, so I kept saying, continue from where you stopped. <laughs> continue now. She was no longer talking. Now, at the point she now said, well, not now. We branched to one eatery. For me, I was just thinking, okay, what do I do? So I bought ice cream and bought chicken and gave her. And then she started gulping the ice cream. She wanted to put it in my mouth, but I didn't want ice cream. I didn't know that I'm refusing the ice cream again. <laughs> now, so we got home, and both of us, we just started talking, and then we talked and talked, we ate, we slept. I didn't know that when we got home again, I was supposed to have asked and say, okay, what you were saying that time? That you said not now. Can we talk now? For me, I thought <laughs> it was over. Now, now listen. Why I'm bringing this to you is that if you don't understand the love language of the person you have married, that is determined number one by gender. 
Number two, by personality. The personality of that individual. If you don't understand, then you will not know what it means to actually love. So for a woman, it is not just about money. Because a man and his wife were quarreling, and the man got angry, and he said he was going to back out of the house for the woman. And he said, if I don't come back to this house for four years, you will leave my house for me. So I ran to collect the key of his car from him. When I collected the key, I said, how will you leave your wife? The man said, what else does she want? Every month, I come home with two bags of rice. A bag of skimmed milk. One bag of granulated sugar. Two tins of granite oil. Two cartons of frozen fish. I bought a car for her. She's working as a teacher. I don't ask for a salary. Yet I foiled the car. What else does she want? So I climbed upstairs to go and meet the woman. When I got there, the woman was crying. I said, What else do you want? <laughs> Two bags of rice at the beginning of every month. <laughs> a bag of granulated sugar. I was mentioning all the things that the man told me. I said, what else do you want? Then the woman said, you can never understand. <laughs> I said, understand what? I was very serious. I wanted to discipline her. I said, understand what? Then the woman said, is it right that I marry? <laughs> Women, am I correct now? <laughs> eh? We are talking about fish. They are talking about granulated sugar. What is the meaning of all those things when there is no love? So, for a woman, love goes beyond you give me something. It was then I came to realize that when what a woman thinks love means is not there, even food will not go in her mouth. So what does it then mean? It means, number one, Show me affection. Communicate love to me, one, by admiring me. Admire me. I never came to an understanding of that until I was preaching one church in Port And I just said, okay, all men now, face your wife. Tell her four things to admire about her. And as they were talking, I saw one woman the way she was just laughing and falling on her husband. I knew the husband must have said something. So I said, Madam, come forward. <laughs> Carry microphone. Tell us what your husband said. For about three minutes, she couldn't open her mouth. She would just say, My husband said. <laughs> so I said, Madam, please go ahead. She now said, Um, let me praise the Lord. <laughs> Everybody look at me, you can see that I'm on the plumpy side, as in I'm fat. And you know this is like bad generation. So I was getting worried, I was buying some drugs, I was dieting to calm down, but the more I diet, <laughs> she said, but as you now said they should tell us what they admire, my husband told me. That anytime he looks at my plumpy sister, it excites him. Let me praise the Lord. And she said, Now, no more dieting. <laughs> now, so for her, she wants you to admire her. Again, she wants you to appreciate her. For a woman, appreciation is a spice of life. Speak words of appreciation. Tell me, oh, my wife, oh, thank you. You have washed my clothes. I'm, I'm glad you did. You iron my dress for me. Thank you, honey. Or half. Don't think it is our responsibility to cook. Thank her for cooking. Don't say, see now my money. Why don't you eat money? <laughs> The same money you are talking about to eat it, you will discover that your money is useless. Want to thank the woman that used bread. So all these things comes into it. Alright? 
and apart from that for a woman you are communicating love she's also saying spend time to listen to me she wants a listening ear now most of us men we don't have that time we will just is it that if your wife wants to talk to you you say i don't have time okay she wait for afternoon she comes in the afternoon you say i just return from work she said okay may god give me grace in the night she wants to talk you say will i not sleep so when will she talk and sometimes you just say well no problem can you please summarize and the woman will say summer what what is summarize uh -huh. so to express love it takes all that and several other things that we come into it section and i would have been asking uh Bio. now um, sometimes we don't feel that we love our spouses during challenging times but each time we remember our commitment to them we know that we don't have a choice but to keep loving them i want to please talk on how to differentiate love being much more than a feeling what a commitment. Thank you very much. I, I, I think um, it's, if I, if I try to say another way, I think it's important for us to know that love is not how you feel. It's not. It's not. It's not how you feel. It is the fact that you are committed to something. You know, there's this man, uh, Henry Ford. You know, let me bring you to another area, uh, Henry Ford. Henry Ford was the first automobile manufacturer. You know, the person who gave us Ford T1 model, you know, that became a car that transformed the automobile world. When he was doing his 50th birthday, when he was doing his 50th birthday, they asked him one question, that, oh, how are you able to sustain your marriage for this last 50 years. He said, well, all he has known in his life is one model. There is no improvement, there is no new model. It is one model that I have and there can never be any other model. So there was a conscious understanding within him that this is my portion, this is my lot. I don't have any other thing anywhere. But as much as I'm on this face of the earth, this is the only thing I have. And I tell you, it is an assurance and a truth that you must continuously tell yourself repeatedly at all times. It's very, very important. So it has nothing to do with what you feel, even though it might express itself as a feeling. But when it is a reality, it's your reality, a reality, a community essence that this is my wife and this is the person that I have chosen to live the rest of my life with. That's where that next step was from the baseline of your conscious engagement that I have to treat this with all of myself. It's very, very important. Now, to say that we're not going to get to moments where you don't feel like, you tell yourself, it's not about what I feel, it's about what I know. Do you hear what I said? It's not about what I feel, it's about what I know. I know that number one, I cannot marry another woman. I know I cannot, I cannot go for divorce. This is what I have. And whatever the problem is, we'll solve it. We'll lock ourselves in the room and say, this is the problem, let us fix it because I don't have any alternative. And the, the reason why I'm emphasizing this, uh, based on what we are saying, it's always at that moment that you are looking for an alternative feeling. And that's where you get to work and somebody's dress is not looking somehow and you begin to compare yourself you know, with somebody else. And they that compare themselves with themselves are of course not wise. So people of God, let's work on this common denominator as a truth. It has nothing to do with how I feel. It is what I know. And I am committed to it to make it work. The end you realize that marriage is your calling, marriage is a commitment, marriage is like in you know, a postage stamp. You know, you get stuck to, uh, to a big envelope, and the two of you must go together until you get to destination. If any one of you 
And that happens. You know, let's, 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 let's metaphorize it. You buy an envelope, you buy, uh, you buy stamp. I'm, not, I'm sure all of us here know stamp. If I'm talking to teenagers, you don't know stamp, they know emails. You put a stamp to the envelope and you're moving. Now, as let's, let's metaphorize it. As the letter moves, even though the stamp may see other letters that are bigger, he realizes that if I'm not stuck to this particular small letter, I won't get to my destination. I won't get there. If mistakenly the stamp falls off, of course the postman sorting it will assume that the sender did not buy the stamp. And what will they do? They will throw it away. So people of God, you must be stuck to what God has given to you. That is your portion, that is your law. It has nothing to do about how you feel, it's about what you know. And what we have also known is that knowledge influences your feeling. For those who understand the law of, you know, this, uh, the theory of uh, cognitive affective domain, where what you know affects how you feel. Are we together on that? So by the time you continue, the, uh, you continuously remind yourself, this is what I know, this is what I know, to a very large extent, it changes what you feel. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Commitment is what keeps marriage. There could be times, love bends with age. The way you will feel when you are a year old in marriage is not the way you will feel when you are 10 years. It bends with age. But what keeps it going is the commitment. The mind that I don't have alternative. And I tell you, what how we feel is dependent on what we see. Is what the other person does. For if God, when we are yet sinner, if he can die for us, he doesn't love us because we 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 we, we have done something.